Breaking news tonight, President Jerry Museveni has appointed Professor Gilbert Bukenya as the Senior Presidential Advisor on Environment and Sanitation. Remember that Professor Gilbert Bukenya is a former Vice President of the Republic of Uganda. Still staying with President Yoram Seveni earlier on in the day, President Yoram Seveni and the chairman of the NRM has launched the update and display of the party register. Now, in his speech, President Yoram Seveni warned registers and other leaders against engaging in corruption and fraud during the registration that previously characterized NRM primaries in 2020, which were marred by violence. The launch was attended by NRM district chairpersons, administrative secretaries, registrars, and members of the Central Executive Committee. Congratulations, Your Excellency. In his speech, Museveni warned registrars and other leaders against engaging in corruption and fraud during the registration, citing the NRM primaries in 2020 that were marred by violence attributed to irregularities in the voters' register. And you refuse. You refuse to register them. Or you register opposition people so that you, you, you allow the opposition to infiltrate. I don't want my people to go to jail. Museveni further cautioned the registrars against the opposition that he says they have already information of their plans to disrupt their exercise. I hear there are plans by the opposition to swamp, to invade and then distort our primaries. These the last minute conversions. What if Bobby Wine comes? and says now, today. Other leaders that include the Secretary General Richard Tudong and the first National Vice Chairman Moses Chigongo warn leaders against corruption and misuse of office. We need to stop holding the party at ransom and conditioning the party to serve our personal interests. They can come with the list of people and they try to bribe you, giving you money to include them in our register. Now, Richard Tuaduong is the Secretary General of the NRM, the man who runs the day-to-day -day affairs of the NRM, the man in the picture there. And I will be speaking to him a little later in this bulletin. If it's not me, then it will be my colleague. But for now, Ramson Muhire is my colleague. He was on this story. Ramson, what is it more than we already know that we need to know? Ramson? Another religious update has been launched, but there are already questions as to whether things are going to be different this time around under the leadership of Richard Todong. This should have begun immediately, but what they are doing now, I think, is just to fulfill the constitutional demand that uh, for people to go into an election, there must be a register. But at the end of the day, I want to predict that they will not follow that register. We have started the process early so that we perfect every stage of the process. We have started with structure election as a test for our register, and we shall keep improving the register. So that by the time we come with the final, the final, the very final primaries of members of parliament, the register will have been tested, everybody will have given input, whatever is wrong will have been corrected, and we should have the best election ever in the history of the party. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. It's been a very busy day for you. I had and saw the president uh, putting you on the spot. For you, what is the biggest carry away for the day? Good evening, viewers, and thank you, Samson. The, the biggest carry is that we have launched the process. We have informed the public and the members of the party that the exercise has started and everybody who felt aggrieved in the last exercise of registration should come and correct his names and his details and make sure that they are satisfied with what we're going to do from their villages. So we are happy that we have started the process to correct the errors that we had in the past. For those who might think this is just a joke, it's not because we have had, what happened in the, in the previous We definitely, we definitely will get back uh, to Richard uh, Todong later. And one of the questions I want to put to him is the president slamming the door, barring entry. 
I want him to answer that question, but for now, let me hand over to my colleague, Kanner. Kanner. Absolutely, thanks, Samson. Now, Parliament has rejected the government bill on rationalization of NITU with the Ministry of ICT. The legislators argue that the entity is not a burden to the National Treasury, as evidence indicates that for the last five years, over 210 billion shillings has been collected by it. Are you telling me that the mainstream ministries in government are more efficient than these agencies? Oh. We know, Honorable Mururi Mukasa, the mainstream ministries, we know them. These who put their courts on the table, on the, on the desk, and disappear and come back at 5 o'clock, we know them. So I'm waiting to listen to every minister to say this particular agency is inefficient and give the particulars and details. Then he goes ahead to show that this ministry where we want to, rev to revert this issue to is more efficient. What is not correct, honorable colleagues, especially the ministers, is for you just to come and cite a cabinet decision. You know, and I mean, at this cabinet decided this, and at this. So what if cabinet decided? We now must justify that cabinet decision to us. And that's what we've been waiting for. And now on the same, we spoke to Professor Vanashas Bariamreva, who is an IT expert, but also former vice chancellor of Macquarie University. And here is what he had to say. It is much easier when you are merging two authorities or three authorities. But when you are taking an authority back to a mother institution, you have issues concerning salary, you have issues of efficiency, you have issues of service delivery. Now, taking Nita U back to Minister of ICT was an ill-advised ill decision. I think uh, we should never have thought about that because there is no way you can have Nita U what the function is currently doing, being instituted under the Ministry of ICT, and you get quality service, uh, you get efficiency. Nita U is currently in charge of the national backbone, and lots of services currently delivering. The kind of mandate it has, it would be inappropriate and ill-advised to take that kind of mandate under a typical government ministry. <laughs> it's like you, you asking a minister to run MTN or to run ART or to run Uganda Telecom. It is not possible. Let's also take a look at uh, the Honourable Member of Parliament for Castle County, Dan Chimosho, on what he had to say. In a letter dated 2nd February 2024 to the Executive Director of NITA, you, a company known as Silton, was demanding or is demanding 36 million to hand over commercialization and management of national back 36 million dollars 36 million dollars for them to hand over the management of the national backbone infrastructure to uganda telecommunication corporation limited this means that just for premature termination which will come as a result of this bill the taxpayer is required to give out or to get 143 billion in compensation and yet total budget and the figure provided for in the financial in the certificate of financial application indicated 78 billion and now, uh, Parliament has rejected the government bill to rationalize Nita U with the Ministry of ICT. The legislators argue that the entity is not a burden to the National Treasury, as evidence indicates that for the last five years, over 210 billion shillings has been collected by it. The Parliamentary Committee on Information, Communications, Technology and National Guidance presented to Parliament a report on the National Information Technology Authority, Uganda Management Bill 2023, giving key recommendations to Parliament. The committee also critically examined. In the general recommendation, the committee asked the House to reject the bill, arguing that NITA Uganda is a strategic semi-autonomous agency of government to spearhead the digital transformation program for the social economic development of Uganda. The ministry did not have specific estimates for revenue and expenditure, for rationalization of net IU. A study to rationalize would have attracted the attention of the Auditor General 
to look at the assets and the liabilities of each of them. And the role of the National Planning Authority would not have been avoided. According to legislators, the collections from NITA Uganda has been increasing from 18.9 billion shillings in 2019-2022 to 45.028 billion shillings in 2022-2023. Actually, the past five years have generated over 210 billion. If you allow that operation and coordination to be under the ministry, we are going to have serious network problem in this country. Efforts by the minister to ask for more time to have government consult on the bill were futile, compelling the speaker to have the House vote on the bill. That we go back and really provide some of this information which is required. I beg to move under Rule 81 that the debate closes. Those in favor say aye and in contrary nay. The legislators welcomed the decision of the House asking government to support the entity in strengthening the technology of all government institutions being an era of global technology. This is Numbers That Matter. Let's take a look at some of the services provided for by Nita U that have saved the government a great sum of money. First of all, a quick glance at Nita U. It has saved government 1.7 trillion shillings. That is through centralized hosting of critical applications. You understand that government has actually been hosting its own applications as opposed to, um, you know, sourcing out. It has also saved government 49 billion shillings by reducing internet costs from $70 to 35 uh, MB per second. More work done by Nita U. It has managed the MBI, which is of course uh, 4,172 4, kilometers plus, connecting over 1,480 ministry departments and agencies through the e government services. And also, more work done, it has cured duplication through e-government. So you need a government services, uh, you need a government service, you go online, but also been able to establish the National Data Center and Disaster Recovery Site. And now joining me to discuss rationalization of government is the Honorable Member of Parliament for Ivory Division East Arua City, uh, Geoffrey Sfeta. Many thanks, Honorable, for speaking to us this evening. It's been a hot debate in Parliament today, and uh, I can see that members of Parliament, you rejected the, uh, of course, merger of Nita U into the Ministry of ICT. Why is that the case? Thank you very much. Good evening, viewers. First of all, I want to say the, 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 the principle of rationalization is not a bad one. But the approach is what we are questioning, and the relevance of the entities being merged is the issue we are raising. As you have uh, ably put out the core roles and what Nita U has been able to save government of Uganda is what motivated us to think. Yes, we agree that there should be efficiency. They sh we should cut down cost of administration. We should uh, eliminate duplication of government services. But Nita U is an entity that has core competence in providing ICT services to this country, and you have seen the benefits it has given this country. Okay. Honorable, when we talk about efficiency, and that is what government uh, is, of course, rallying behind to rationalize and merge government departments and agencies, do you find Nita U efficient in its work? Quite absolutely. First of all, Nita U is not just a cost center. It is not an entity that is taken away from government without looking for its own resources. You have had the contributions and the revenues Nita U has been able to, to put in place every financial year in an incremental manner. The last three financial years from 18 billion to 22 billion to 46 billion something, and it is incremental going on. Two, if actual government wants to save costs, Nita U should be the backbone of ICT services to the entire government. All right, Honorable, my last question to you is, so you rejected the bill, what next? One, government has an opportunity to strengthen Nita U to cut down the cost of ICT services in this country. Once Nita U has been equipped and strengthened, the cost of ICT services in all these ministries will go down. 
every financial year, every ministry is given in its budget estimates required to be funded for offering ICT services in these numerous ministries of government. If you need to use capacities build, if it is supported, if it is strengthened, it can actually offer all these services to all the various uh, departments and, uh, and uh, ministries of government, and that will save a lot of billions of shillings of taxpayers' money. Two, it will attain efficiency. You have seen the projects that you has been able to run independently, the contributions it is making to the national coffers. Therefore, if we support it, we strengthen it, it will be able to save this country a lot of money. It will be able to attain mm. efficiency mm. and effectiveness that we desire.